we're going to talk about property taxes and prorating. And let's start with taxes. Um, how do they calculate what you owe to the county every month? Well, I know we learned this with maybe our glossary terms and um, in property ownership. Now we're gonna do some math around it. But what happens is they determine an assessed value um, based on assessor data and what they feel your property is worth. Again, assessed value is just for the purpose of paying property taxes. It's got nothing to do with market value. I know I've maybe used this scenario where you and I are neighbors. You have got an amazing house. You've been a great steward of it. Um, it's maintained meticulously. It's always an apple pie order. You've done a few updates. I have 27 cats. Whose house is worth more? Well, you and I know the answer is you all day long. But the assessor is just looking at data and they're only looking at data and updating every two years. So whatever data they're working on is historical. They're not coming into your house to see my 27 cats and the fact that your house is amazing. Maybe at best they're gonna drive by, maybe, okay? So it's really based on data and trends that are happening in your neighborhood. But when they come up with these assessed values, now how do they know how to charge you property taxes? Well, they use a mill rate. And a mill rate is a one one thousandth of a dollar by definition. And so that means a mill rate of 28, you would not put this into your calculator as 0.28 because that's a percentage. You would put it into your calculator as 0 0.028. Now we call this a mill rate um, for the exam purposes. I believe in Polk County, for example, they call it a rollback figure. And the rollback figure is really long, like point, like 10 digits long, I swear. I think it probably equates to between two and 3% though, if I had to translate it into a percent versus a mill for you. Um, but at any rate, we're gonna learn mill for the exam. So if you've got a $56,000 property and a mill rate of 28, you would multiply $56,000 by 0 0.028. Because again, it's a mill, not a percentage. That would give you a tax amount of $1,560. So your annual tax figure. Again, if we did uh, $372,000 with a mill rate of 47, we would take the 372,000, multiply by 0 0.047, 0 0.047, which would give us a tax amount. This is ridiculous, but it's a, a number just for an example of $17,484. Let's do a third. If we have $178,000 and a mill rate of 32, again, we would put that in our calculator, not 0 0.32, that's a percentage. We've got a mill, it's a one one thousandth. That's gonna go in as 0 0.032, giving us a tax owed of $5,696. And then you can divide that by 12 again to help figure out further the PI, the T taxes of the PITI to start building a mortgage payment. Now, I mentioned this when we were talking earlier in some of your reading about property taxes, mill rates, things of that nature. Um, and I had shared a little reading story for you about an individual who uh, ran for office who said, I will not raise assessed values. 
the crowd went wild. Okay, maybe not. But they voted for him into office because they thought this is great. We're not going to have an increase in our property taxes. And guess what happened? Their property taxes went up because what did he do? He made good on his campaign promise that he would not increase assessed values, but instead he increased the mill rate. And therefore their taxes went up. And therefore I heard he was getting like death threats. Not funny, but kind of a bait and switch, right? So that is how the, the relationship of those two things happens. Now let's talk about transfer tax stamps. And again, in Iowa, we call it revenue stamps. And it is literally a tax just to transfer title from one party to another. And typically in Iowa, this is a fee that the seller pays as a closing cost. So you will help estimate this so that they can understand their net proceeds. Okay, so if we've got a $360,000 sales price with a transfer tax of $1.80 per 1,000, what we would do is we would take the 360,000 divided by 1,000 and we get 360 taxable units and then we would multiply that by $1.80. So if you take 360 units by $1.80, you get a transfer tax of $200. Let's do another one here. $420,000 sales price. But instead of 1,000, this is per 500. So we will divide it by 500. And we'll get 840 taxable units and then multiply it by 53 cents or 0.53. That's gonna get us a transfer tax of $445 and 20 cents. Let's do this one at $160,000 purchase price. Again, this one is per 1,000. So that gets us 160 taxable units multiplied by $1.40. That gives us a transfer tax of $224. Now, FYI in Iowa, um, we do $1.60 per 1,000. So you divide by 1,000, multiply by $1.60. I believe there's a credit for the first 500, um, but for the purposes of estimating proceeds for a seller, Keep in mind, $1.60 is typically what we use here in Iowa for this transfer tax calculation, again, known as revenue stamps here in Iowa. Now we're going to talk about tax proration. And here's the deal about tax proration. There are certain bills that either need to get paid on the first of the month or the first part of the period or the, at the end of the period. So either the first of the month or the last of the month or first of the year or last of the year. Um, typically taxes are paid in what we call arrears. So they're paid at the end of a period where something like homeowners association dues, those have gotta be paid in full at the first of the month. So if a buyer closes at the middle of the month, they owe the seller money um, to make the seller whole for the fact that they didn't live there the whole month. Right? And this is how we figure buyer and seller debts and credits 
in order to close a transaction on that closing disclosure. Remember, we went through all those itemized, itemized fees. Well, here's how we calculate it. Here are two very important terms for you. Prepaid are items that at the time of closing are a credit to the seller and a debt to the buyer. From January 1st through the date of closing, the period when the seller owned the property. Prepaid means it's a credit to the seller and a debt to the buyer. The seller had to pay the taxes, for example, on January 1st for the upcoming year. So they do owe taxes on which they prepaid January 1st, but then they pay for things and they're not gonna own the home after closing date through the end of the year. So the buyer has an obligation to make the seller whole from closing date through December 31st. Accrued items that are paid at the time of closing are a credit to the buyer and a debt to the seller from the date of closing through December 31st. The seller owes a credit for the time they owned the home, but the taxes are not due yet. So accrued means they're due December 31st and the seller owes a credit to the buyer for the time they owned the home but the taxes are not due yet. The borrower is owning the property um, from closing date through December 31st. That's what they'll owe for taxes, but the seller needs to make them whole by giving them a credit from January 1st through closing date. Now, I tried to make a little chart for you. And one thing I want to remind you is Iowa pays taxes very differently. So if you know a lot about paying Iowa taxes already, ignore it in your brain just for the purposes of this exam. Because when they do prorated taxes for you, it will be on a yearly calendar basis, either the taxes are prepaid on January 1st, or they're accrued and paid December 31st. So here's what I try to build for you for a little visual. I did an easy closing right in the middle of the year, June 30th. If it was due on January 1st, it's prepaid and the seller is gonna get a credit from the buyer. they've got a tax obligation to pay for those taxes January 1st through the closing date of June 30th. Accrued means these taxes are due on December 31st. And it's a credit to the buyer because the buyer has a tax obligation to only pay for when they closed on the property June 30th through December 31st. And then I know that this is a little complicated to do on video, but now I've done an easy closing for you on the 30th. So they basically know we've got to split it 50-50. It just depends on whether it was prepaid or accrued, who owes who. If it was prepaid, the buyer owes the seller a credit. If it was accrued, the seller owes the buyer a credit. But now I want you to think of this line right here. Now we just slide it, right? Based on when closing is. This is the middle of the year, but maybe we slide it and close January 30th. Or maybe we slide it and we close September 10th, right? And if we close September 10th, 
if it's prepaid, the seller needs a credit from January 1st through September 10th. If it's accrued, the buyer needs a credit September 10th through closing. Okay, so I want you to think of this line as the movable. And when you're at the exam, you maybe want to draw it out like this. Up to you. That sliding scale. Now, there are two different ways that they can figure these prorated taxes. The two methods are the 365 day and the 360 day year. The 360 day year is a daily rate, which means you've pretty much got to know how many days are in every month, which is why I gave you this really sweet poem reminder that you might remember as a kid that says 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. So those four months have 30 days. All the rest have 31, except for February, 28 days clear and 29 in each leap year. So that means January, March, July, August, October, and December all have 31 days. There's some nick knuckle, right? September, I don't remember what that is. I'm too old, but I did bring up this poem because I knew it would serve some of you really, really well. So that you're going to need to know how many months. So take whatever the taxes are, divide it by 365 days, and then you've got a daily rate. You've got to figure out the number of days, okay? What I'm going to focus on for you is the 360 day year. And the formula for that is that you take the tax rate divided by 12. That gives you a monthly rate. And then you take the monthly rate divided by 30, and that gives you a daily rate. With the 360 day method, you do not need to worry about this poem. We are just going on the assumption that there's a 30 day average. Okay. So the 360 day year divide by 12 and then divide by 30. That's the formula. Again, you do not need to worry about how many days are in the month because the formula is divide by 12, divide by 30. Okay. So I'm going to work through with you some accrued examples. And the accrued examples mean that the buyer is going to get it credit. And it's going to be a debt to the seller at the time of closing. Okay. Which means the seller owes January 1st to the closing date. Uh, they owe a buy the buyer a credit, okay? That's when they own the home, but the accrued example is not due until December 31st, okay? I'll put even due December 31st here. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so these accrued examples is a buyer credit, a seller debt. The seller owes January through thir uh, the January 1st through the closing date. That way, when it's due on December 31st, the buyer has money for when they didn't own the property yet. Then they'll pull their money closing date through December 31st. Bam, we've got the full payment. Okay. So if we're closing on October 17th, I'm going to have you come up based on these yearly taxes 
a monthly and a daily rate. So again, I want you to divide by 30. If we take 4680 divided by 30, we get $390. And if we take that divided by 30 days, we get a rate of $13 a day. So if we're closing on October 7th, how many months and how many days do we owe a credit to the buyer? We're closing October 17th. We need nine months and we need 17 days of taxes. Now, here's the deal. How many of you said, well, October 10th is the 10th month? It's 10 months. If you made that mistake, actually, thank you. Thank you because we've got to have nine full months and then 17 days into October. Remember, we're trying to calculate January 1st through closing date. This is the credit the seller owes. This is the time the seller owed it. We got to credit the buyer. That's the whole purpose of accrued. So it's nine full months and 17 days into October. So if we take 390 times nine, you will get a number of $3,510. Uh, Our daily rate is $13 and we've got 17 days, which means our daily amount is $221. So if we add the 3,500 for the nine months and the $221 for the 17 days, the buyer will get a closing credit from the seller for $3,731, $3,731. Let's do another one. The closing date of June 30th, how many months and days does the seller owe a credit to the buyer? They owned it January 1st through June 30th. right? So that's going to be five months, five full months. And 17 days. Sorry, no, 13. No, 17. That's right. This one was 13 days. I apologize. Now we've got five months and 17 days that we're trying to calculate. So they're going to pay five full months through the end of May and then 17 days into June. No, I was wrong. This is 17. I'm so sorry. What am I thinking? Not here to confuse you. We're 13 days in. I lost my notes. I apologize. The first one was correct. We're five full months and 13 days in, okay? That's the time the seller owned the property if we've got a closing date on June 13th, okay? So our monthly rate, if we've got yearly taxes, our monthly rate is gonna be $660. And our daily rate is gonna be $22. So if we take 660 times five months, 
through the end of May, that equals $3,300. And then we've got to add the $22 a day times 13 days, which is $286. And those added together are going to give us $3,581, sorry, $3,586. Somebody needs reading glasses, I apologize. Again, this represents the amount of taxes January 1st to June 13th when the seller owned the property and the bill is due on December 31st. So we've got to give the buyer a credit, a debt to the seller, but a credit to the buyer so that when December 31st comes around and the tax bill is due, they are whole. They've got the chunk credit from the sellers. Then they got to get up their own money together from when they owned it, closing date through December 31st. And now they've got all the money that they need to pay the bill. Now, let's go to our closing date. of August 22nd, how many full months of taxes do we need? Full months. We need January 1st through the end of July. So that is seven months and how many days? So seven months and then 22 days into August. Again, this is for the time the seller owned the property. So if we've got yearly taxes of $10,800 divided by 30 gives a monthly rate of 900. And then again, divide by 30, that's the formula to get a daily rate of $30. So if we've got seven months at $900, that equals $6,300. And now we've got to add the daily rate. We've got 22 days times $30. That equals $660. So if we add the 660, plus the 6,300, our tax credit will be $6,960. Again, that's the credit that this seller owes from January 1st up here through the closing date. It's accrued, so the buyer gets the credit. So they've got to pay for their ownership January 1st through closing, wherever we slide it. Obviously we did October 17th, the first one. That means we would slide it down here. So we know then just by theory, the seller owes about three fourths of the tax amount to the buyer. I mean, just using logic. If we close June 13th, we're right here almost about 50 50. About just to kind of use some gauge. August 22nd, you know, you're going to be about right here. You know that this seller owes about two thirds um, of the taxes, is their responsibility. So that's why, again, I was hoping this visual helped a little, a little. Now let's do some prepaid examples. And again, this is going to be where the seller paid it at the beginning of the year. We did a crude where they paid it on December 31st. This now means they had to pay the entire bill for the year up front 
January 1st. So now the buyer owes the credit to the seller for closing through the end of the year. So again, if you know that we're going to close on January, sorry, let's say we close March 15th, right in here. We know that the buyer is going to owe the seller from March through the end of the year. That's about three fourths of the year, right? So just rough estimate, they're going to owe a credit to the seller for a January 1st, and we close October 10th, we know that the sellers owed that property for about 75% of the year, roughly. The buyers owned it for the last 25%. So the credit, the on making scale, hopefully again, to give you a visual. But let's do these prepaid examples. Again, it's a seller credit. And a buyer debt. Can't type. Taxes were due January 1st. So the buyer owes a credit to the seller from closing date when they bought it to December 31st. So now we're going to be working almost in a backward scale. We're going to be doing the opposite of what we just did with accrued. And if we've got a closing date on March 17th, how many months and how many days do we need to calculate that this seller gets a credit? Well, if we close March 17th, that's in the beginning of the year. So the buyer is going to owe them a pretty large credit because the seller paid the whole year, but they only live there January. February and a few days into March, the buyer now needs to pick up and reimburse the seller from the 17th until the end of the month. So that's 13 days. And now they owe April, May. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Right? It's about 75% of the year. So again, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So nine months. nine moms, nine months and 13 days. So let's add this up. If we've got 3420, I'll write this up here instead. If we divide this 3420, our monthly rate is going to be $285. Our daily rate, again, we're just dividing by 30. That's the formula. We're going to have $9.50 a day. So let's figure our credit. If we've got $285 times nine months, that is going to give us $2,565, okay? 
And then we're going to add the daily rate of $9.50 times the remainder of the year, which is 13 days. That equals $123.50. So if we add that $25.65, plus 123.50, the total tax credit from the buyer to the seller, debt to the buyer, credit to the seller, is gonna be $2,688.50, right? They've owned the property um, at least three fourths the year, maybe 80, almost 80% 80 of the year. So again, in proration, it's 80% of the taxes just so you kind of know whether you're cooking with fire or not, right? Now let's go on to a closing date of May 20th. How many months and days of taxes do we need? Well, the seller paid the bill on January 1st and is closing May 20th. So now the buyer owns owes a credit to the seller from closing date until December 31st. So they owe 10 days through the end of May. And then they owe June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So seven months, 10 days and seven months. So again, let's figure out our monthly and daily rate. Again, divide by 12, divide by 30. That is the formula for the 360-day formula. So that would give us a monthly rate of $246 and a daily rate of $8.20. So let's go down here and let's total this up. We've got $246 a month and we've got seven months. That equals $1,722. And then we've got to add in the days. We've got 10 days times $8 and 20 cents, this equals a whopping $82. So if we add this 1722 plus the 82 for the months and days, we've got a total tax that the buyer owes the seller a credit for 1,804. Now you can kind of see May is a little towards the begin or the middle of the month or the middle of the year. May is a little towards the middle of the year. That's a tongue twister. So of 3,000, you know, you right there have a gauge of 1,500 and the buyer is going to owe a little bit more than that because they closed on the other side of June, right? On the other side of the th half uh, way threshold. So again, as you're using this sliding scale, if we closed in May, we'd be like right here through the end of the year. So you'd owe a little bit more than half. Let's do one last one. And then we're going to finish up this section. We are gonna do some commission calculations. We're gonna get you paid. Prepaid example again, let's say we're closing August 20th. August 20th. How many days and how many months do we owe? Well, with prepaid, it's easier, I think, to start with days. We've got to finish out the month of 10 days. And then how many full months? September, October, November, December. So that's four full months. So let's figure out our daily and monthly rate. Again, divide by 30, 
sorry, divide by 12 and then divide by 30. We divide by um, 12, it's $150 a month. Divide by 30, that's $5 a day. Again, we're gonna have $150 times four months. That equals $600. Then we're going to add our $5 daily rate times 10 days. That's gonna be 50 bucks. So the total credit um, that the buyer owes to the seller is gonna be $650, okay? Again, let's scoot up here and let's look at it. They close like right here. So they own the property for about a third of the year, give or take. Seller owned it for about two thirds. Buyer owes it for the last third. Again, I, I think this is a, hopefully a hope, helpful visual. It is to me to help understand how this works. Um, these have become popular test questions in the recent past. So again, look for the words accrued or prepaid. Go back up here to these definitions, prepaid, means it was done at the beginning of the period. Accrued means it's paid at the end of the period. So for property taxes, that would be January 1st is prepaid. Accrued is December 31st. Prepaid is a seller credit. Accrued is a buyer credit. And as promised up next, we're gonna figure out some commission dollars, earn some money. <laughs>